this is Linda from Dev Tips and Tricks, where I try to make your development experience a little easier by guiding you through some of the key concepts quickly and simply. Today, we're going to see how to request holidays from the Google Calendar API using an API key and C Sharp. An API key is a unique identifier required by Google when making calls to their APIs. If you'd like to learn more about API keys as well as how to create your own, please check my other video, How to Create API Key Fast. My name is Linda Lawton. I have been an application developer for more than 25 years. I am a Google developer expert and I have been working with the Google APIs now for more than eight years. Please remember to like and subscribe for more developer tips. As always, any links mentioned in the video can be found in the description below. Let's get started. You first need to know the calendar ID. I'm going to show you how to find a calendar ID for the Google Calendar public holiday calendars. Inside the Google Calendar website, you will first go to settings then browse calendars of interest and scroll down and you will see regional holidays. Find the country you're looking for and select it. And you see how it was added at the bottom. Now I can go back and now you can see how the holidays are appearing in my calendar. I can go click on the three dots on the side Go to settings and here is the calendar ID that I can use in my request to the Google Calendar API. I have created a simple console application inside of Rider. This will work exactly the same if you're using Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code. Use whatever suits you best. The first thing we need to do is to get the NuGet package needed for this project. I have added a link to the NuGet package in the description. Once you have installed the NuGet package, we can begin. Now there are a couple of constants we will need in order to make our project work. The first being an API key. An API key is a unique identifier required by Google when making calls to their APIs, specifically if you're making a call to a public API, which will not be using an OAuth token. If you haven't created one before, you can check out my other video on how to create API keys. The second constant we will need is the calendar ID that we found earlier. The calendar must be set to public in order for this to work. Just remember that this will only work with GET requests. You cannot use an API key in order to write to the calendar, for example, to insert events, even though it's set to public. Now we will create our calendar service. The calendar service is used to make calls to the API. Notice how we pass it the API key. I have also given it a name. The name that you give your application doesn't matter that much. It's only used by the client library to build the user agent, which to my knowledge isn't used by anything. So don't stress over it. Now we will create the actual request that we will be sending to Google. In this case, we'll be sending a request to the events.list method and sending our calendar ID. I have also chosen to add the optional parameter of fields. This will limit the response coming back from the server to only the summary, the start date, and the end date for our events. Then we can use execute async in order to execute the request. Notice how the response contains an array of items. These are the different events. Finally, I will add a for each just to show you the data that's being returned.
That's it, it's that easy. This will work with any calendar that's been set to public. In the description section below, you will find a link to the companion blog post on this, which contains all of the code that you will need in order to create this. Thank you for once again joining me for this quick video tutorial. If you're interested in seeing how this is done in any other language, please look through some of my other videos. And please remember to like and subscribe, and I hope to see you back again for another video tutorial.